Sooner or later, every C beginner stumbles upon the struct versus typedef struct issue. So, when you define a struct, do you just write something like struct s, or do you write typedef struct something something and then t, or even both? So, first of all, let's discuss what this means. Okay, so if you write typedef struct s something something and then t, this means we define one type a struct with the members x and y of type int with two different names, the first name being struct s and the second name being t. This means if you want to declare variables of that type or use that type elsewhere in your program, you now have a choice between writing struct s or t. Just writing s won't work and writing struct t also won't work. Okay. And these are really two different names for the same type, evidenced by the fact that this assignment will work. Okay, so that's quite a lot to digest here. Um, let's pick that apart syntactically and let's see what the ingredients are. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the normal struct definition. As you see here, we define a struct called S with these members and let's forget about the C for now. So this is how you define a normal struct. Okay, now the next weird part is this C. So the C programming language allows you in the same declaration to define a struct type and variables of that type. That's quite unusual. More modern languages like Java or C Sharp don't have that. Okay, so that's the first thing that you have to understand. Uh, ordinarily, you would first define the struct in one declaration and then uh, define variables in a second declaration, right? That's probably more readable. Okay, and then um, what's the difference between writing struct as d and typedef struct as t? The difference is here we define a variable and here we define a typedef or a type alias saying um, struct s is a bit much to write on the keyboard or type on the keyboard. I just want to write t from now on. Right? That's what type def means. It turns a normal variable declaration into a type declaration or type alias. Okay, so now again, it doesn't matter if you write struct s or t, both denote the same type thanks to this type def here. Okay, cool. So basically, these three lines above are just a, a combination of these ideas here. So we define a struct. And then we combine the fact that we can also define variables and turn variable definitions into type definitions. Right? So these are three ingredients mixed uh, into the same thing here. Okay, I think that's why it's a bit hard to understand initially because there are multiple ideas in here. Okay, so I think for beginners this is quite confusing because the struct S is right next to each other, that makes sense. But the type def T is very far apart from each other, especially if the member list is quite large. Okay, it would be nicer if type def T was also next to each other, the two tokens. And indeed that's possible because the C grammar doesn't care if you write type def first or some struct definition first. So we can switch that around and then it would look um, like this. So I can write uh, here is my normal struct definition and then I don't want a variable of that type but a type alias of that type named t. And then again you have the exact same choice. Do I want to write struct s or t? That's just a different syntax for the same idea as above. Now I think this is quite neat and nice for beginners but in real world code you probably will never see this. Indeed I had to check <laughs> with multiple compilers if they all accept that and indeed they did. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it makes more sense, but don't write that in real code. You will confuse your coworkers. Okay, and then another interesting tidbit: if you can't decide uh, between good names for this S and this T, and you also you only have a good idea for one name, then you can reuse that name. So you can write struct S and type def S, because structs live in their own namespace. So this, you get no naming collisions here um, and so now you have a choice between writing struct s or just s, doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. 
Okay, so is there a situation where you have to pick one of those syntactic variations? Yes, there is one that I'm aware of that comes uh, in structural recursion. So if you have something like a linked list where you say you, I have some payload data and then I have a pointer to the next node, then we have to write struct s pointer here. You can't just write s pointer because struct s is already in scope inside the struct definition, but the type def only comes into scope here. And in general in C you can't <laughs> forward reference names uh, that, that aren't in scope yet. Right? So if you take away the struct, your code will no longer compile. Okay, but still struct s and s are two names for the same type, meaning if you define a variable of type s, then you can use a pointer to that variable of type s, even though here we have a pointer to a variable of type struct s. Again, those are just two names for the same type. This will work. Okay, so in general, which version should you choose? There are good arguments for both of those versions. So some people say, oh, I think it's quite nice to see that a type is a struct because then I know it's probably expensive to copy. So if I pass them to functions, maybe I should pass pointers to those structs instead of passing them by value directly. Other people say, oh, I don't really want to know if it's a struct or not. There should be an implementation detail. The implementer should be able to change his decision later if he wants a struct or not. So there's good pro and contra points for, for both of those. So for your personal projects, just pick one. In my experience, uh, people coming from other languages strongly prefer this version and people who have never programmed before don't really care. And if I show them this version, they think that's also nice. Just pick one and be consistent in your own hobby projects. And if you join a professional team, adopt whatever coding standards they have. Right? Don't, <laughs> don't uh, program against the grain, so to speak.